Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Arena. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you're going to make use of your product look great design on your custom search result page in Elementor. So at the end of this tutorial, we're going to have something like this. Take for instance, this is our landing page and these are the various products we have with, we have already designed this with our loop grid. So we're going to make sure that whenever you search for a particular product using this search bar here, the results you're going to see will look precisely what we have here, exactly what we have here. So we can test run that by searching for a term. Let's say we search for seeds, uh, seeds. Now you can see these are the various products we have on our website that contains the term seeds. And if we should go back and then let's say we search for a, for yogurt, let's copy this and then let's search for yogurt. Uh, you can see this is yogurt as well. And also, if you search for a term that does not exist on your website or that is not a product on your website and exists on your website, you're going to get a nothing found result. Take for instance, we search for um, home or we search for about, which is a page on our website, but this is what we're going to get. It seems we can't find what you're looking for. So without further delay, let's dive in and get started. All right. So this is our sample page. This is our presume landing page. Now you can see this is our product, the various products we have on our website, and this is the look great design for our product. So at the end of this tutorial, we want a situation whereby our product archive bring up this design, shows this design, and also most importantly, our search result also shows us this particular design with this hover effect and everything. Mind you, I've already created a video concerning this particular uh, product card that shows uh, the back of our product image on hover like this and the link to this video will be added to the description of this video for you to access it for those of us that have not seen it before so now what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a search form at the top here and then we're going to test run our search and see what we have by default working for us before we proceed to customizing it all right so let's come over here and then let's search and let's drag this search form and drop it here now, for those of you that are doing this on a live website, you might decide to change the skin to various skins to, to suit your, your website or just tweak the search form to suit whatever you want on your website, but we won't be doing that. So let's just update this. And then now let's uh, preview it. So this is what we we'll have on our landing page. So now if we should search for, let's say uh, a product now let's um open our dashboard let's go to our dashboard let's open it on a new tab and then let's head over to our post let's see the various posts we have and then let's search for let's see let's copy out this keyword here and okay now let's come to this and then let's search for it and see okay now it gives us uh, a post as you can see this is what how our search result looks like now, if we should go back and then let's say we we'll copy out this product here and we search for it as well. And now let's see what we get. Okay, we still have the same product, but this is the look. This is all good. It doesn't look good at all. Now, let's go to our dashboard. Now, on our dashboard, we're going to come over to the template. Now, for the template, we're going to head to the team builder. Let's open the team builder in another tab. I like opening things in another tab so that it speeds up our work. All right, so now this is our team builder. Now, if you come over to the search result page, we see that uh, we do not have a search, any search result, custom search result created. So we're just going to create one. Let's add one. Okay, we won't be using this uh, pre-built search result page. Let's just close this. And then, now what we're going to do here is that uh, we're just going to add a container. Let's add a container first, and then let's go over here. And you give it a padding of 100 pixel all around. And on link this 20 pixel. Yeah, 20 pixel. Yeah, as well. Okay. So now we'll go back here. And now most people would want to drag the archive post and then tweak it to suit what they want. Also, search it for, uh, for products and then dragging this product here and then editing it. But still, yet you, you will get a wonderful search result. But at the end of it, it will not give you that kind of look on your um, on your search results. For it to do that, you have to work seriously hard to customize this particular um, widget here to get what you want. And we won't be do doing that. So 
what we're going to do is we're just going to make use of our loop grid. The, the particular loop grid we use here is the same loop grid we're going to use for our search result. So let's do so. Let's search for loop and let's drag and drop our loop here. All right. Now let's change the template type to Pura dot. And then now let's search for the product. I've already created this pro, uh, this particular loop design and it's called the hover hover product okay so i'm just going to select it now in your situation if you haven't created a, a your product loop you can create one from scratch by clicking on the create uh button that you saw there okay so this is what we'll have here so i'm just going to change the column here to let's say four and then the item per page to eight so we'll have something that looks better like so okay so now if i should publish this we're going to have a problem because when we search, we won't get the desired result. And I wouldn't want to text run that here in order to avoid making this video very long. But on your own, while you're doing this, you can publish it here and see what you get when you search. It won't be pleasing. Okay, so now what you're going to do next is you come over to the query. Now you're going to change this query from latest product to current query. Okay, so now after you've done this, now you can see we now have some added cards, but that's not... Not to worry, we're going to sort that out. And then we'll come over to the pagination and we can add the various pagination styles here. And also, uh, if you want to design this particular uh, pagination here to suit your, your website, to make everything match, to have something that looks like what we have here. I've already made a video on how to design that. And I will also include that on the description of this tutorial for you to, to view and see what we did there. All right. So... Now that we've set everything, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to this additional option here, which is something wonderful that Elementor added. So we're just going to toggle this. And what this does is in a situation where we do not have uh, what our visitors are searching for cannot be found. This is the error message. This is the message that they will see. So this is wonderful. Now we're going to publish this. Now we can just go ahead and save and close this with this particular condition to include it in search results. And then we're going to search and still get our results, but we'll still encounter some, some, some problems along the way. You can test run that as well. And then some, also some people might decide to, um, let's say, let's add another condition in this condition. Let's, um, uh, use the exclude and then let's exclude, uh, let's say the post. So when we search, when, when the user search for post, it doesn't give the person uh, any result about the post, any result from the post, rather it shows them an empty field. But this only works if you're making use of the archive product, or archive post or the product also. But if you're making use of your loop, this feature will not work. And we can test run that if you want. Let's just save it and test run it and see. Okay. Now we've done that. Uh, let's come over to here. So now if we should refresh this, uh let's say we search for a uh, post let's copy this out okay this post let's copy this and then let's search again and see you see we still get the post we still get it and now if we should go back and we search for uh let's say something else uh john let's search for john now we still have this john as well so now let's go back Let's go back and then let's search for our, the good thing about this is that it works well for our, our product. So if you search for a product on our website, like let's say we copy this out and search for this particular product, we can see that it gives us what we want, the exact product with our loop grid. Now, the only problem with this is that if our visitors should search for things that are not a product in our website, they're going to get a uh, something that doesn't look nice at all, just like what we saw when I searched for a term called uh, John. When I searched for John, you can see what we got. This is not pleasing at all with all these empty cards and all that. It doesn't look nice, but we can fix this f without much hiccups. So, and I'm going to show you how we can, what we're going to do or we'll find ourselves in this particular situation. Now, what we're going to do is um, we're just going to go back here. We're going to go back to our dashboard. Now, on our dashboard, we'll go back to um, the template and team builder. We'll open it in another tab again. Now, this time around, what we're going to do is we're not going to be making use of our search result to fix that. In order to fix that, we're going to create our product archive. 
Okay, for some of you that have already created the product archive, now that is a good step for you. Now I'm going to show you what you're going to do, how you're going to edit your product archive and what you're going to do to your product archive to have the desired result. So let's just head over to the product archive. Let's add a new product archive. Now we won't be needing this, so we're just going to close it. Now what we're going to do here is uh, uh, we can we can just create this from scratch. Let's say we just let's do this. Um, let's add a container, or we can just go back to our search result and copy what we have here and paste there. But let's just create it from scratch so we we see what we're doing. Now I'm just going to add hundred or and on link this and then change this to twenty pixel. 20 pixel and then change this to 20 pixel as well. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to copy, uh, search for loop and I'm going to drag and drop our uh, loop here. Okay, now I'm going to change the, the template type for post to product and then I'm going to search for our custom our product loop that we already created, which is called the hover product. Now this is it. I'm going to select it just like I did for the search result page and I'm going to add four change this to beat and then I'm going to come over here to the query which is very important now take note for those of you that have already designed a, a product archive page for your website that contains your loop design that you want to be the same to with your uh, search result now what you're going to do here is all you just need to do is come over here to the source and change this from latest to current query and that is all you just need to do and then you wait for the next step to be done now for those of us that are creating it new now this is what we'll do we just create add these changes to current query and then we'll come over we can add the our search temp here and then make use of the other video that is in the description of this video to design our to design this okay so now let's come over here uh now that we've done all this let's go back Let's go back here and then let's come over to this additional option and let's add a nothing found. Okay. Now this is what our user will get whenever they search for product that is not on our website or any term that is not a product on our website. This is what they will see. Okay. So now that we set everything and everything looks nice, we're just going to publish this and then we're just going to add a condition to all product archive and then we just click save. And voila, we are done. So this is the first part. Now the next thing we're going to do is we'll return back to our dashboard and we're going to add a plugin. Now this plugin, a lot of us might have already have it on our website and it's called the Code Snippet plugin. So we're just going to come over here and then add a new plugin. Now for those that do not have it, their website, we're just going to search here for uh, Code Snippet. Okay, now you can either add this particular plugin or we can add this, but I've already activated, installed and activated this particular plugin. So, but both plugins perform the same function and you can use them. The only difference is their their interface, their, their UI designs. Uh, so, okay, so I've activated this. Now let's come over to the plugin. This is the code snippet and then let's add a new snippet. Now we're going to add a custom snippet. Just use this to add our custom snippet. Now we're going to call this, let's give it the title of uh, product over, whatever you want. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to come over to my Atom code editor where I have a code here. This code, not to worry, I'll, I'm going to attach this code to the first comment on this video on YouTube for you to access for free. It's going to be pinned there for you. So uh, I'm just going to paste it here. And then I'm going to come over here to the code tab, change it from HTML snippet to what PHP snippet. And then I'm going to come here, toggle this to active. I'll come over here, ensure that it's auto insert, and then location it runs everywhere. And then for the device type, any device type, set it to any device type. And once we've done this, everything looks fine. We're just going to click on save snippet. Okay, now that we've done this. Now, what we're going to do is now head back to this page here. Uh, let's clean this and then let's load the page itself. Okay. All right. So we'll now have this uh, 
pretend landing page now we're going to search now let's go back to our post let's copy out this search this keyword here that we used previously let's copy it out and then let's try it out again let's paste it and let's search now you can see this is all we get it seems we can't find what you are looking for now we'll go back let's search for for john as well all right let's search for john here let's clean this out and search for john okay and you can see we now get uh nothing found as well all right so now let's go back and then let's search for uh let's copy out let's say fish all right let's let's copy this and let's search for this you can see we now get this particular with this feature here now some of you might be wondering okay this is what is happening here is that without code we inserted our search result now pulls our search file from our um archive from post archive it loses our post archive showing the various search terms we've searched so now you might be wondering what happens to our search uh, our post archive does it still work precisely how it should work sure it does so to, we can test run that by going over here to our product let's go to product and then the product will come over to our category now let's load this category of our product let's open it in the new tab and let's see what it looks like and voila you can see it still looks the same so at the end of this tutorial you can see now that if you follow this tutorial precisely you'll be able to make sure that all the product everywhere on your website that has a product has a this has similar designs would be it the archive the search result and so on you now have a uniform website so i hope you find this tutorial helpful if you're new to our channel please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can notify first when this i drop a new video now feel free to drop your comment whenever you're confused and i'll do well to attempt to read but until then see you on our next video Bye-bye.